All right, Big Lake is a, is a special camp that a lot of kids give their lives to the Lord there um, and the other summer camps as well. It's, so the offering today, loose offering today, does go to support the or Oregon um, Conference Youth, and a lot of part of that is the Big Lake. Uh, special offering uh, locally here is for the Orchard Student Aid. Um, you either need to designate that in your tithe, tithe if you want to do that. Okay, uh, again, welcome. Um, this is the fourth Sabbath, and um, normally Pastor Alex would be here preaching, but he's on uh, vacation this, this weekend. I, I guess pastors are allowed to have vacations occasionally, so... So uh, Randy is going to give our uh, sermon today. So, um, for those that can't make it to church, um, you know, we, we stream it online and um, the instructions are in there. And again, welcome to those online. Um, for those uh, that are part of the finance c committee, um, we're going to be having a meeting this coming Thursday, and um, announcements will be coming out on that. There will be no board meeting, though, for August. Um, for those of you that went to Columbia Avenue Academy, in a couple of weekends, they're going to be doing what they call the Columbia Classics Reunion. You can read more about that in the bulletin. Um, and most of you have heard about this uh, thing, and we have an answer in as well. Tomorrow's the annual uh, corn roast picnic, uh, starting at 4 o'clock here. A lot of corn has been ordered already, and uh, should be a fun time. So please come, invite family and friends. If, if you're going to come, I encourage you to bring a salad or a side dish and some desserts. Um, Although I think snow cones and some s'mores, I think, are typically offered as well. But, um, let's see. Uh, for elders, elders, deaconesses, and deacons, a reminder that after church next week, we, uh, we are having a meeting downstairs in the, in the fellowship room there. So uh, please, there won't be a prepared meal, but uh, bring, bring some food. So, unless you don't want to eat. So, that's a uh, reminder to look at the, the prayer, prayer re request list for healing and request and praise. And it's good to keep those in mind as well. So, um, some of you might remember that the Pathfinders a few weeks back uh, went over to Gillette. So uh, I'm going to invite uh, Janelle up now, and she's going to have a few words about that, and she's prepared a video as well. Good morning, church. Good morning. I switched to black. All right. Good morning, and I want to start off with a video to show just some of the um, pictures of our trip to Gillette and kind of give an overview and then I'm going to call some people up and we're going to talk a little bit more about Gillette and our fun there. So Joe, go ahead and run the video.
about to let was probably the evacuation. Watching all of those people move into the buildings together and organize themselves and just seeing how people cared for each other in a crisis, um, I thought was amazing and really cool to see. I loved a lot of things about Gillette. The evening meetings were fantastic. I really enjoyed getting to know the Pathfinders and the staff better. But my favorite thing about going to Gillette and the trips around it um, was the same thing that I love most about Pathfinders. And that is, I love watching our Pathfinder kids go out and try new things, um, push past out of their comfort zones. And I love seeing that spark as they realize that it's worth it scary factor and as they pick up new hobbies. I loved watching them go caving. Most of the kids didn't want to go. It was crazy hot outside and once they got into those caves, they loved it. And it was, it was magical to watch that. I loved watching them as they were doing their pin trading because these kids who were afraid to talk to anybody outside their club were going out and they were talking to total strangers and they were kind of getting to know them um, it was fantastic to watch Naomi, who had been there before and knew how to pin trade, and she helped everybody else in the club figure out what to do, and uh, if kids weren't sure if the trades were fair, they'd run them by her, and she just, she helped them. And it was just, it was awesome to watch. I love watching our kids grow, and I am grateful for the opportunity to see that and the opportunity that it gave my family. Thank you for sending us to Gillette. I want to echo, echo that sentiment. Church, we could not have gotten to Gillette without you, so we want to thank you very, very, very much. And could not have done any of that without staff, so those of you that are here, come on up. Um, and Naomi, if you're there you are, come on up. Um, yeah. I think my favorite part of Gillette was just working with this wonderful group of people, plus you heard uh, the Grams, they're enjoying uh, Big Lake this week, and, um, and oh, those that are not here, too. Anyway, we had a great time, I just appreciated the positivity and the work togetherness, um, that was a big part of it. I think our road trip was just as fun maybe as Gillette um, for sure uh, as you kind of heard hints of there were some storms which people back there say you got to expect and so we went prepared we were expecting big winds and lots of rain and thanks to your generosity we were able to get some new tents that could withstand that and our camp was one that stood proud and strong and was able to withstand the storms, so thank you. Um, and also had, um, Chuck was able to find just some mesh covers to, to go over the thing, so the wind would just go right through and not lift up our covers and destroy them and everything. So I think that was, you know, the Lord gives wisdom and, and provides, and I just really appreciate that. Um, so anyway, before I just take all of your guys' thunder, who wants to go first and tell? I'm not one of those people that like being up front, so. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I have actually two experiences. One of them, and if he expands on our vehicle, the very first day we were driving, um, he heard some sounds. I didn't hear them, but he did. And we ended up getting off the freeway and the road that we got off on, um, there was no way back on the freeway. We didn't know this when we got off. And there was nowhere to turn around. We were pulling the trailer <laughs> with the truck, and we were not with the group. So as we're doing all the food, and the trailer's there, has sleeping bags, everything in it, um, it's sort of a core point, and I'm like, I just don't want anything to happen to us being responsible for it. And so we did find a place to turn around, Chuck inched back, back and forth, back and forth with the trailer, and um, we got turned around. But it is Friday at 4.30, and we have a truck that's making pinging sounds. 
and um, I'm frantically calling for, um, for mechanics as poor Janelle is trying to call me and I'm hanging up on her all the time and I'm going, I gotta get these mechanics before they close on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, Baker City. And the first place I got, he goes, I can't do it, but I've got three names for you. And so since we were stopped, Chuck was calling one, or I was just calling and you were driving, and no answer. The second one, I left a message, no answer. The third one, I just called and no answer, but I left a message. And I'm like, I don't know what we're gonna do. And so we actually prayed. <laughs> we're like praying as we're driving. You know, find us somebody. And the third mechanic actually called back. And I guess he was the best one out of all three in town. We went there. He told us he couldn't see us right away, but he would see us in about an hour. And so um, we finally got a hold of them. They were driving back to us. And it's like it's supper time. <laughs> so on the side of the road, we whipped out a tarp. We whipped our little camp stove and we had a meal there, right across the, the street from the, the garage. And every time I went up to him, because I knew we had a schedule, and every time I went up to him, and I just sort of stood there and he's working on a truck and he'd always, every time I went, he'd always just stop and he'd look at me and he'd talk to me and he'd really pay attention. And he felt so sorry, I explained what we were doing, how many thousands of Pathfinders we were going to, and he just goes, no. He says, I'm not going to leave till I get to your vehicle. And I talked about the Sabbath with him and why this was important. And I knew we had to be going and we had a schedule to keep. But every time I went to him, just sort of stood there. He just like he just took his time and he was just very, very sweet. And so he can finish up on the other bit. My other favorite part, actually, Noemi was part of it with me when we got evacuated into the building. It was so stuffy, so hot, till you got in there. And we didn't know what we'd find in there. We found a little spot on a little ramp on the side. Everybody had seats filled. And, you know, it was getting a little bit more stressful there. And then all of a sudden, we had a lady, and she waved to us, and they said, you know, do you want to come and save these two seats? And these two very sweet young people um, had said they'd been saving these seats, they said, for like, some older people that came or someone with a baby and no one had come up through there. And they decided that they would pick us to be the ones to come and sit with them. And they were pin trading or they were getting ready, ready with their pins and they just made the experience. We were laughing by the end of it and having a good time. So it was a lot less stressful. So, you know, God has ways of, of having us meet different people and, and taking um, part in different things. So um, I like to think of trips like this as uh, um, two things, uh, both a wonderful experience uh, for all the things you get to see and do, like Yellowstone and Mammoth Hot Springs and like uh, Craters of the Moon uh, and some of the things we got to see on the way, as well as the amazing programs we got to participate in. Um, but it's also a growing experience because at multiple points along the way. We had to adapt, we had to shift our plan, we had to change. And that's great for staff, but it's really an amazing experience for the Pathfinders because they may not experience that level of adapting in day-to-day -day life. And so these are the things that memories are made of. And uh, when we had the truck problem, uh, Shelley was talking about, um, as it turned out, um, there was nothing serious going, well, it, it probably was serious if we didn't deal with it, but uh, th there was no damage that had been done at that point. And so we made some adjustments and uh, went on and made it home safely. So uh, that was all good and that was a blessing of God because if, if we had lost our truck at that point, uh, it would have changed our whole trip. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was was the similar experience when the storm came. Um, well, the first storm came during the night. We heard uh, flash, we saw flashes of lightning and uh, thunder and such uh, that some of us who live here are probably not as accustomed to as people who live in the Midwest um, or in the Rocky Mountain states. And uh, there was one bolt that uh, 
I think was pretty close to our camp because the flash and the boom were like right like that. Um, but then the next day, uh, we got word during the day that uh, we needed to evacuate the camp and everyone needed to go inside. And uh, that's quite a unnerving thing when you have 60,000 people in camp. Um, so we all headed to the nearest building and, and were, uh, you know, moving slowly so that there wasn't any, you know, any crush of the crowd. Uh, but we ended up in this, the theater where you saw the video. And the thing that really impressed me about that scenario was um, once we were all in there, the, um, there was a leader, and I'm not sure which one of our Pathfinder leaders it was, um, from the, probably from the division that came in there and said, okay, master guides, you know what to do. You take over now. And so you've got this crowd of maybe three, four, five thousand 5,000 people in this building, um, and some of them are crowded on the stage. And so now you have leaders from different parts of the world just standing up and saying, okay, guys, we're gonna sing. You know these songs. And so they would just start leading songs and the whole crowd would sing. And it was just beautiful to see. And then finally somebody showed up with a megaphone and was able to uh, keep us on track that way. Uh, but it was just beautiful to see the leadership coming from different parts of the world, uh, pulling together to make it a positive experience even in a really tough time. And then eventually, after it might have been 45 minutes, an hour, I don't know how long we were in there, uh, somebody came and said, the storm has passed, so now you can slowly move out. And when we did, we went outside, and there was a beautiful double rainbow that you probably saw in the picture. Um, so that's, that's a memory that I think none of us will forget. And uh, God richly blessed us and uh, gave us a lot to remember for the rest of our lives. Well, um, like everybody else, I am very thankful for this trip, for everything that everybody has done for all of us, for the Pathfinder group. I've always felt like we've been loved and um, cared for always in, uh, in any situation. So this was a really good experience. This was our second time going. Uh, we went to Chosen, and then this will be my second time. I feel like this second time was a little bit more prepared, and we were... We did have minor setbacks, but we, we found the way, like right away, how to take care of it. Uh, we never skipped a meal, thank you to Shelly. We were well nourished and always had food and everything ready. Um, even though, you know, one of us came a little bit injured, the car problem, the storm. I would say that God was always with us, wherever we went. It, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, it was a great experience to see that he was there with us at every, at every moment, and it was very scary, but when you came out and you saw that rainbow and everything went by, you just, you could not, not understand that God was there with us at every time. Thank you. Well, um, I had lots of fun. It was a great experience. I'm really glad that God blessed me to have that experience once again. Um, I would say that just seeing that double rainbow, I guess it just really helped me believe that God is always there no matter what, and that I should always have the faith I need in him, even when I'm scared and thinking, oh my goodness, is my mom okay, or is everyone okay? Like, he's always there, watching everyone. Um, my favorite part of the whole experience was the puppet guy from the show. He was really funny. I really liked <laughs> him singing and just, I love the way he puts God in his jokes and like ends up making us understand him more. I um, also really loved seeing the rodeo. It was really fun and I had lots of fun there. I guess it was a once in a lifetime experience. One other thing I just wanted to quickly share. And it was, to me, it was really special to see that we were able to camp in the middle of clubs of people that we knew. And uh, not only we knew, but that our kids knew. And there were broader connections than just within our own club. And uh, even, you know, uncles and cousins and relatives from across the country that were camped somewhere else in the camp. And so those connections were really, really special. 
as part of this experience and seeing that Pathfinders is more than just what we do here. It's a worldwide experience. And I think that was one of my things that I really liked too is coming from Richland not too so very long ago, being able to see people from Upper Columbia Conference and things and, and just be making those connections because we are a worldwide organization, so that was fun. But I want to quickly give some thank yous. A big shout out to Pastor Westland, who's not here, but I have a thank you for him too, and making this gorgeous trailer that had solar panels and all kinds of wonderful stuff so that we could glam be glamping almost. <laughs> and um, also to Joe, if you want to come down here, I have a gift for you be of your help with the trailer and all the just helping us get ready. And also um, for the, the chuck wagon, this is our, our name for, for the chuck <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, the, the drivers of the wagon and Chuck Wagon being the food and everything and Chuck and the wagon, it just, it just you know, it was spontaneous. It just had to be the Chuck Wagon. <laughs> and so thank you for all of your help in just getting us ready and Shelly and making the menus and getting the food and just all oh, so much. It is incredible. And a thank you also to assistant cook and um, so to Maria thank you so very much really appreciate all your help and if grams are watching this yes I have something for you when you when we connect again and Joe are you coming down or I will come and give it to you okay and then a couple others too that I have and a big shout out to Ron for holding down home fort and Cedric to um, joining us as part of staff so that we had plenty of men staff at night and so anyway a big shout out to God and to you as a whole church I really appreciate it thank you and since I way overdone time we better go Definitely, that was wonderful. We're in the spirit. We're looking forward also to Randy's presentation also. So in the bulletin, there's three. We're just going to tailor that to a spirit song and then come Holy Spirit. So, so we'll leave enough time for Randy. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you and his spirit. Descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lands. sadness 
Give him all your years of pain, and you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. of his spirit do come Holy Spirit come as a wisdom to children come as the sight to the blind come strength to my weakness. Take me soul, body, and mind. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. children can come up. We are going to take up the children's offering. So if the I see some children there. Are you wanna you wanna come pick up the offering? Do we have any children pick up offering? <coughs> Your kids want to pick up offering? No. Mm. All right. Kathy's gonna channel her inner young young self <coughs> oh wait okay
It's good to see the kids running around church. My light there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Um, the scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of John, probably my favorite gospel, uh, and the first part of it. Chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Yeah. If you would like to kneel with me in prayer, I'd join you to do that while we sing our prayer song. Bless the Lord who reigns in beauty. Bless the Lord who reigns in wisdom and with power. Bless the Lord who reigns my life with so much more. He can make a perfect heart. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings you've given us. Thank you for the adventure that the Pathfinders had and were able to in endure and enjoy. And uh, we ask you for bringing, through, bringing them through all the trials and giving them the excitement of, of what it's like, just a taste of what heaven can be like with all our friends there and focuses on you. And we ask that you give us that same blessing today, Lord. Lord, we've got some friends and some family that aren't doing so well, and we ask that you touch them. You know exactly what they need. Heal them if, if that's your will. Uh, bless them with endurance if that's what's going to happen. Lord, thank you again for being with us and for the rain we've had this week and for the sunshine that comes through. We thank you for everything. We give you praise for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Bless the Lord who reigns in beauty. Bless the Lord who reigns in wisdom and in power. Bless the Lord who reigns my life with so much love. He can make a perfect Hey, uh, Chuck, Shelley, Elizabeth, Naomi, Janelle, good job. Wow, that was a great uh, tribute to what you guys did, accomplished, Pathfinders, the weather, but uh, perseverance, yeah. Well, um, good mid-morning, everyone. And as I look at the clock, I'm thinking to myself, you folks are really brave because uh, you probably surmised by now that I can be a little long-winded. Yeah, yeah, and guess what? The time bake ovens? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I, this day snuck up on me. 
I uh, knew that I was going to speak today, and you know how things go. And so, how did you guys get here so quick? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, yet here you are, and here I am. So, pondering on what to talk about today, I, two weeks ago, had the privilege of taking... Brittany and Mark and our two grandkids to lunch. And on the way into the restaurant, I asked my daughter, Brittany, I said, Brittany, I'm supposed to speak in a couple of weeks. Do you have any, like, words of encouragement or a theme or anything I could talk about? And she said, Dad. Well, let me just tell you, say this. I was at Meadowglade once, and they asked me to do a testament, and so I got up and I did my testimony, and it was supposed to take 20 minutes, and it only took five minutes, and Pastor Rick Bowes said, um, we have a little bit more time, and Brittany said, well, I don't have anything else to add, and so I'm done, and it was over within about five minutes. So that's my challenge then, Brittany, that I need to speak for at least five more minutes. <laughs> And then, John isn't here. I have Pastor John, who has been my mentor for years. And um, he, it, it's, it's wonderful because he can, you can, you can converse with him and, and he, he can uh, give you some pointers and, and things about what you're, what you're saying. And, and it's very, very helpful. But the thing with Pastor John that he will say at the end, and, and he prays for you, and he has for me, and, you know, on the way to the sermon. And this is when he was visiting his grandkids in California, Henry and Hazel. Is it Hazel Marie? Yeah. And he would say to me two words, and those two words will haunt a speaker. Those two words will alter what you're going to say. They will change and revamp and remold and reshape everything that you were going to do. And it becomes very, very difficult if you let these two words encompass your thinking. And that's what I did. And those two words are, anybody want to guess? So what? So what does it mean? So what does it matter? So what's the significance? So what are they going to remember by what you said? So what, so what, so what? So I've been attacked by the so what. And then it dawned on me, I had an epiphany. Why don't I bring the youth room upstairs to you guys. It's, oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> I didn't expect an applause. So we're going to do a class setting that we did several weeks ago. I have some youth up here that's going to help me. And so we're going to basically do a youth outline for you guys. Since, you know, to come downstairs and stand up in my room because there's not enough space, would be a little bit difficult. So we thought we'd bring the, the youth room to you. It's a, it's a youth room road show. How does that make you feel? Make, it makes you feel youthful. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Okay, so that was, that was my epiphany. So the first thing that we do, I'll take my globe. Thanks. First thing that we do in our class is we have food and fellowship. Okay, so this is the time where the, the youth come in and we make pancakes. Today we had pancakes. Uh, sometimes we put food coloring in the pancakes and they're pink, right? And today we had plain pancakes and we had chocolate chip pancakes. Joe House came down and enjoyed a meal, yes. And we uh, do maple sausages in a fruit bowl and sometimes we make orange Julius's and uh, Iori will do that, and it's pretty simple. You need frozen orange juice, crushed ice, milk, vanilla, and sugar, and you have an orange Julius. And so we'll have fun. We'll food, do food and fellowship. And while that's going on, I will interject some thoughts 
and try to interact with the youth, and I'm mostly not heard. And if we have a visitor, I like to say, welcome to the youth cafeteria. However, we do get into some pretty unique and fun discussions. And so it always begins that way, and then I introduce um, the theme of where we're headed with either a couple of uh, uh, words or a, or a saying, okay? Today is a saying, okay? And the saying I'm going to throw at you, and then we'll come back to it in a little bit, okay? The very, here it is, you ready? The very things that we run from are the very things that would make us, and the very things that we run after are the very things that make us an irrelevancy as we face the future. Let me say that again. The very things that we run from are the very things that would make us, and the very things that we run after are the very things that make us an irrelevancy as we face the future. Say that back with me. Come on. Come on. Say the. Let me say it again. Because this is what I make the youth do. See, this, this saying attaches to their hippocampi, and I make them remember, and then I do a $5 question next week based upon this saying. Okay, now I'm not going to give you guys five bucks. Okay, so ready? The very things we run from are the very things that would make us, and the very things that we run after are the very things that make us an irrelevancy as we face the future. Okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so we'll have to work on that. No, it, it's it, it they, they 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 do the same thing, and so we I remake them I make them repeat it, and so that's our saying, and attached it itself to our theme, which we will get to in a little bit, and then I always have this globe. And we do what happened this day in history, okay? And a lot of times I can attach what happened in history because it's, after all, his story with a biblical um, uh, attribute or a biblical connection of some sort, okay? So I say what happened in U.S., in world history. On August 24th, you guys try to guess the date. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. I don't want to end with this one, but so I'll, I'm gonna, I'll mix it up. Okay, in, in this day in history, the country of Ukraine gained its independence. Anybody want to guess what year? 1991. The country, remember Russia split up, you know, President Reagan and all that whole thing, you know, Lithuania and Croatia and all the countries, right? So U Ukraine won its independence in 1991. And of course, you know, we have that war thing going on right now, the proxy between, you know, sorry, not to get into that. Another thing that happened this day in history is NATO was established. NATO was established. Anybody want to guess what year? 1949 was after World War II, right? Okay, and then I'm going to interject this one. The, the town of Naples in Italy has very fertile soil. It's rich in farming, rich in agriculture, rich in ranching, okay? That's what they did back then. The problem is, is that nobody understood the soil content as far as nutritional value and the minerals that were in the soil. They just, they just farmed it. And then in uh, a very catastrophic event, they found out why. Because on August 24th, Mount Vesuvius erupted. And the town, city of Pompeii, which was, I think, I think about 20,000 people was instantly, well, 
very, very rapidly. Have you guys ever been to Pompeii? Huh? No? Anybody? It's, it's pretty interesting to walk through the town and see the historical Roman city back in the day. So that happened in, in AD 79, okay? So they didn't start excavating it until the 1800s, so it sat dormant for almost 1,700 years, okay? And then they slowly begin to excavate it. And today you can walk through this, the city of Pompeii and you can see the, the rooms, the tile, how they lived. It's, 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 it's really interesting. That was in AD 79. Okay, last but not least, anybody ever heard the, of the Gutenberg Bible? Okay, the Gutenberg Bible finally came to its completion on this day in 1456. Okay? So, 1456, that's prior to, to Martin Luther. Okay, um, what do I do after this? Uh, this day in history. Oh, you guys. You know what? This is going to be the first time that you guys come to church and you actually get money. Because usually when we leave church, what happens? We have offering and, and all that. And I don't know about you guys, but I always leave church a little broker than I came. So what I do, and I mentioned it earlier, is I do a $5 question with the youth. And the $5 question is based upon the things that we have talked about in the past. Okay, so I'm going to try to to keep the $5 question pretty, pretty simple for you guys. Did I, did I already give you guys the money? Do you have the $5? No, you don't have the... That's for something else. Here you go. Okay. So, help me out here. Okay, how many do you have there? I have four questions. How many fives you got? You have four? Oh, I have an extra. Huh. All right. Okay. Five dollar question. You guys ready? No, no. Why do I do a five dollar question? Because I'm paying these kids, these youth, to pay attention. Okay? So, I know, I know. I feed them, and then I, and then I answer, then they, they answer questions, and I give them money. So, and you guys are wondering why, why, why they want to come to church all the time. It's because I pay them. So, okay. Don't stampede on the question, okay? All right, so if you have your hand up, they will bring the mic to you, and you will try to answer a $5 question. And yes, what do you get? What's your reward? Five bucks. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Why do they call the Sea of Galilee the Sea of Galilee? <laughs> Anybody want? Oh. Because it's a sea. Well, yes, it is, but since you were the first one to put your hand up, let me tell you why. It's out of tradition that they call it the Sea of Galilee, and they didn't have a word for lake, because the Sea of Galilee is not a sea. It's a freshwater lake, correct? Okay, five bucks. Good job, James. All right. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is better than I thought. Okay. Next, is, it, am I, is this okay, you guys, that we're doing this? Yeah, I, I mean, it's already 12 o'clock, and I'm, I'm feeling bad. Okay, next $5 question is, we have the Sea of Galilee, and it flows into what river? The Jordan, the Jordan River, right? So the Sea of Galilee flows into the Jordan River. How long is the Jordan River? Hands? How long is the Jordan River? Oh, anybody? You want to try to guess? We'll help you. Somebody try to guess. Oh, Oliver. Five miles. Five miles. Well, well, you're off just a little bit. Anybody else? Oh, you guys are getting brave. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, whoever had their hand up first? Yeah. Oh, she's going to try. 
Ten. <laughs> Close enough. Give her five dollars. All right. Good job. 157 miles. <laughs> but she's well on her way. <laughs> she's doing her best. You. Google doesn't agree with me? Uh, all right, well, all right. I don't think so. I don't know. You know, that's not fair, youth. You're not supposed to have your phone out. You're in big trouble. <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Next question. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so, so the, the Sea of Galilee is called the Sea of Galilee out of tradition because they didn't have the word for lake, right? Freshwater lake. And then it flows into the Jordan River for 157 to 200 and whatever miles. And, okay, third question. Ready? What regions does the Sea of Galilee, does the River Jordan flow through? There's three regions. What regions does the sea, does the river, the, the Jordan River flows through? Flow through. Sorry. Anybody? Three regions. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. Because I, I do that. I give the youth clues. The first one is Galilee. Did you hear me? Okay. Because it's the Sea of Galilee. So it's, shh, Galilee. Okay. Okay. What's the second region? <gasps> Wait a minute. Wait for it. Clue. Clue. The woman at the well. Samaria, and of course the last, I, I have, I have to, oh, she's got her hand up again. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, over here, over here, yep, yep, go for it. Jerusalem? <gasps> yes, close enough, Judea. Okay, so what are the three reg regions, you guys? Oh, you guys are good students. Ah, next week, if we do this again, you're going to get five bucks. Okay, and the last one, hmm, the last one, I'm going to put it, I'm going to place it to you as a trick question first, okay? Here we go, ready? Who was the leader of the Roman Empire when Jesus was on the earth? That's a trick question. I should say, who were Plural, the Roman leaders when Jesus was on the earth. Anybody know? Why? Well, well, you guys can't do that. Was it yeah. Caesar Augustus and Octavian Augustus? What's that now? Was it? Is it was like Caesar or Octavian Augustus, right? Okay, so Octavian Augustus is and one. He took. He was the distant nephew from Caesar Augustus. So Octavian Augustus was one, and then he died. Who was the next one that lived to be, that lived to be um, uh, until AD thirty-seven? Before Nero. Tiberius. <gasps> Tiberius, you're right. Okay. Woo. Okay, what do we do next? Oh, you guys. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this because unless you guys, you know, I mean, when you start walking out, then I'll know. Okay. <laughs> it's an object lesson. It's, it's, it's an object lesson, okay? And the object lesson that I'm going to do is a bit odd, but it has significant meaning later on when we get into the, well, when we get to the Bible story, okay? So we have two things happening that we're going to come back to. One, the saying, the very things that we run from are the very things that would make us, and the very things that we run after are the very things that make us an irrelevancy as we face the future. I want to be relevant. I want to matter. I don't want to be inconsequential. Do you? So, that has a connection that we'll come back to with that saying. So, our object lesson is 
that we are going to ask you guys some questions, and we're going to give you cash and prizes. Okay? I know. I know. You guys came to church. It's a good time for you guys to come to church because I'm speaking. What other church can you go to where you get money back? Right? <laughs> okay. So, you guys have to pick people and divide it up. And you have the cash and you have the prizes. And it's really, really simple. It's not complicated. Don't make it hard. They're going to ask you a question. Can I give you a clue? You can't get it wrong. Did you hear me? You can't get it wrong. Okay. All right. So everybody gets the prize. We're all winners that way. Okay? All right. Hurry up because we're running out of time. What is my favorite color? Blue. Correct. <laughs> what is my favorite number? Seven. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking of a number between one and 1,000. What is it? Uh, 89. You got it right. How'd you know? <laughs> what is my favorite animal? Horse. Correct. <laughs> What's my favorite state? Washington. That's right. <laughs> How tall am I? No. 5.2. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Fantastic. You guys are so smart. Where is my dream vacation? What's my favorite food? California. Pizza. Pizza. Okay, one last more. Mm, what do I want to be when I grow up? <laughs> yes, here you go. What? Oh my goodness. What's my favorite soda? Oh, it must be the beer. <laughs> <laughs> You can grab your Bible and get ready. So, <laughs> I have a reason why we're doing this. <laughs> I have a reason <laughs> why I'm doing this object lesson, and it's going to attach itself later. Just, just bear with me. But think, think about this for a moment. What? if we did this on a grander scale? What if, what if uh, we launched into this grand event with advertisement on the radio or a TV ad or, uh, well, we don't have newspapers anymore, but flyers. What if we advertised this event as a major grand event and we were handing out cash and prizes how many people would come would we be full in the pews would they come for the right reasons no no so in a way we're promoting that saying which i'm that's not my intention but it has um, a significant point in in just in just a little bit that um, um we can We'll, we'll, we'll get into here. Um, the caveat that I, would, that I would attach to this grand event would be that you guys could no longer receive any prizes or any money because you already did. You could come and help out and get to know me and the youth better. And here's the question. How many of you would come back? Hmm, something to ponder on. Okay. We're going to read. It's a little bit of a long verse, um, but we're going to go ahead and read it in its entirety because it's a signi significant um, uh, part of our story. Okay, so the verse that I will be reading today is John six twenty two to 40. So just please buckle up for this. Okay. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there. 
and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. You are looking for me, not because you saw mir miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food and spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what, was, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from the heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up to the last day for my father will for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day all right thank you thank you so wow that's quite a that's quite a caption uh, from the bible to think about um I'm going to segue just a little bit and take a moment. I know we're running late, but this is important, I think. Um, uh, what, what do we do with the speculative? What are we going to do with the theologians? What do we do with the science and the scientists? What are we going to do with the mathematicians? What are we going to do with the conjectures? You've probably realized that we skipped over a major event that had just happened. It just happened. It's on the next, it's on the previous page. The feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the multitude, right? And so there's an interesting, um, a part of that feeding of the 5,000 that scientists today and theologians today and mathematicians today are trying to decipher how in the world did Jesus do it? Because then when you unpack that situation, you find that, that there was 5,000 men, and of course we know it's more like 20,000, right? 20,000 because of the men and the, the women and the children. And so they're ordered, they're told to sit down. And so while they're sitting down, Jesus, of course, blesses the loaves and the fishes, right? And he puts them into the baskets of the disciples, which are 12, and the disciples hand out the food. And then they come back, and Jesus blesses the baskets again and multiplies them, and then they go and they hand out the food. And then he comes, they come back, and then they hand out the food. There is a time involved here. Minutes are ticking by. And as they're handing out the food, they're getting further away. So how did Jesus do this? This is conjecture on my part, so please forgive me, but what if there was a miracle within the miracle? What if the very baskets that they were holding onto were multiplying simultaneously? Isn't that a cool thought? 
the disciples were actually literally holding a miracle in their hand because they would reach in and grab the food and it was multiplying in their own basket, simultaneously all 12. And if mathematicians and theologians say that each disciple, which there were 12, had 10 people helping them, that would be 120 people helping the 12 disciples. They could have fed the people in a couple of hours. Without that it would have been 19 to 21 hours. So that doesn't make any sense. People didn't, didn't plan on spending the night. People didn't uh, plan on, on, on eating lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. You know, they didn't have the provisions to spend the night. So how was this possible? And that's the thought that is uh, conjecture because we just don't know. But it does make mathematical sense, doesn't it? So they had a miracle within a miracle. When's the last time you held a miracle? I held a miracle this morning. My daughter, Aubrey, is visiting, and she has her little baby sailor with her. She's our newest grandbaby. She's 10 weeks old. Is that right? And what a blessing and what a miracle. And you guys have all held a miracle too, haven't you? Huh? Yeah. So that is a miracle within a miracle. Okay, back to our Bible story. Where, where did this question come from? When, when did this question materialize? How did it get there? We know that Jerusalem in the day of Jesus was a was it had a population of between 40 and 55,000. But during Passover, it swelled to 180,000 people. The street corners were full. The restaurants were full. There were no vacancy signs all over the hotels and motels. You couldn't find a place to park. 180,000 we're in that. So it's easily, to con it's easily conceivable that, that the multitude, the multitude followed Jesus, right, for the feeding of the 5,000. But within that multitude, there was a question. And the question followed Jesus to the place that they were sitting, or the place that they were sitting is where the question first surfaced. Here's the scenario. Somebody at some time said to each other, do you see what I see? This man is feeding all of us. Do you think he could feed us tomorrow too? Well, if he's gonna feed us tomorrow too, do you think that I need to go to work? I mean, is he gonna take care of our monetary value uh, situation? Is he gonna take care of our geographical situation where we live? Is this person a person that we could attach ourselves to to make life easier? And then let's go way past it all. Let's go ahead and say, could we possibly make him our king? King of what? One would say to another. Well, king of Judea? King of Samaria? King of all of Galilee? King of the... King of the Romans? You mean to tell me I could have Roman servants serving me? No taxes? Can you imagine this scenario with the people who are sitting on the grass waiting for their food to come in the miraculous event, the feeding of the 5,000? Because in Scripture, it tells us straight away. Verse 30, what can you do? Show us a sign. And Jesus, of course, reads their minds, and he says to them, no, 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 no. I know why you followed me. I know why you're following me. It's not because you understood the miraculous thing, the miracle that I just performed. It's because of what you might be able to get. And so he read their minds, and he tried to connect himself to them 
And there is a miracle within the miracle on this too. The first miracle was they just experienced the feeding of, the, of, the, of 20,000 people. They saw the miraculous event. The second miracle was that he was uh, trying to attach himself to them for eternal life. And because of their, their ideologies and because of their materialistic interests and because of their physical needs, they missed the second miracle. They missed it. And for some of them, check. And for some, checkmate. Because they left saying, we don't understand. Isn't this the man from Joseph and Mary, the carpenter's son? And they said, in closing, this is too hard. This is too hard. So the bread of life eluded them because what? What were they thinking about? They were thinking about their physical and their materialistic needs, and they got in the, that got in the way of them receiving the second miracle blessing, I am the bread of life. Do you see where I'm, where I'm headed with that? Okay, so, lost my train of thought. <laughs> the very things that they ran from are the very things that would have made them, and the very things they, that they ran after are the very things that made them in relevancy as they faced the future. We need to be careful. The very things that we run from are the very things that would make us, and the very things that we run after are the very things that could make us an irrelevancy as we face the future. I want to matter. Do you? I want to be relevant. I do not want to be inconsequential. I want my life and my legacy to mean something. I want to know what that is, and the only way that I can know that, and the only way that you can know that is to attach ourselves to the one person that goes on and on, right? So, was this a coincidence? My saying, that I'll leave you guys with and close with is, goes like this. Lucky is the man or woman, boy or girl, that realizes a coincidence is only God's way of remaining anonymous. Why are they lucky? They're lucky because there are no coincidences with God. He is in complete control all the time. Coincidences for us, yes. For God, no, there are no surprises, right? And so, back to the object lesson. The church pews would be full, but they would be here for the wrong reasons, right? And if they would miss out on the blessings that, that God and this church might have for them but they're, because they're caught up with the materialistic and the physical things in life. And we need to be really, really mindful of that and careful that we don't get caught up in that, okay? So, Anyway, I, I'm going to go ahead and close because it's getting late. Maybe I'll, we can talk about this again uh, another time. But let me just leave you with this thought that we, uh, how can I put this? That we, we serve a God that goes on and on and on, right? And we need to live our lives in such a way that we recognize God in our lives and what he is doing for us. That we have these, uh, our, that our futures are coming at us 60 seconds a minute. And that we need to take these minutes and turn them into moments. We need to take these moments and turn them into memories. And our memories can be for, uh, all about the love that we leave behind that we can be known as a people who love the Lord so much that we actually are able to leave love behind for other people to remember us by. And that could be our legacy, and that could be our destinies, that the Lord uses us perpetually, okay? So, um, you guys have been so good. You've been great youth. I know your cell phones are going off. You're in the middle of texting and gaming and social media. Thank you so much for listening to me. I know I went a little bit longer, but let's have a word of prayer, okay? Lord, thank you so much for allowing us this time together. 
that this story is in the Bible and it's not a coincidence that it's there for us. It's there for us so that we might, we might learn a lesson uh, from it, that we might guard ourselves from the physical and the, and the materialistic and not miss out on the blessing that you have bestowed for us. So Lord, we cherish your name. We thank you for your goodness and your love and your kindness in our lives. How excellent is your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah.